بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه من ولاه I ran into an article today that I wanted to share with you and also next to that I would like to bring another incident and make some sort of a relevance in these two incidents this is an article that was published in the Tennessean it's a newspaper that is in Tennessee and the title reads and that's in Nashville Tennessee sometimes a mob sink is just a mob sink and Mahalma mob it's just a mob sink the reason for this title is the following building managers and legislative staffers have sought to reassure some concerned Tennessee lawmakers that the recent renovations at the state capitol did not install special facilities for Muslims to wash their feet before prayer. فكروا انو عملوا renovation لل state capitol وحطوا اماكن لغسل الاقدام من اجل الصلاة. ف they had to assure them انو لا it is just a mob thing ما في شي للمسلم. Connie Ridley wrote in an email, I confirmed with the facility administrator for the state capital complex that the floor lever sink installed in the men's restroom outside the house chamber is for housekeeping use. Legislative administrator, the, the administration director Connie wrote in an email, it is in layman's terms a mob sink. Republican Senator Bill Catron from uh, Murfreesboro. Uh, Murfreesboro is the town, if you remember, the Imam who came and they were trying to build the masjid over there and they had problem over there. This senator confirmed that he had spoken to Humphrey about whether there were religious reasons for the new sink after the issue was raised by Republican Judd Mathney from Tallahoma, another town or district in Tennessee. Quote, I just asked the question about what was the intent of that. And it satisfied my curiosity after it was presented to me. Now, I would like to quote from the Bible to prove that first washing the feet is a matter of cleansing that was inherited from all prophets and this is from the Old Testament Exodus verse number 30 it's talking about Musa alayhi salam. he placed the layer between the meeting tent and the altar and put water in it for washing Moses and Aaron and his sons used to wash their hands and feed them for they washed themselves whenever they went into the meeting tent or approached the altar as the Lord commanded Moses. As the Lord commanded Moses to wash their hands and to wash their feet. It is also in one of the Christian denominations a ritual to wash someone else's feet as a way of bringing humility and humbleness into your character. I'm saying this because this sensitivity toward anything that is Islamic out there is going beyond yani, what is acceptable from these people who it is enough for them to be going curious and uh, around anything that could be made if it has a sense of relativity to Muslims or their rituals. We are proud of our rituals if it comes to wudu. And we are believing that this great cleansing process is meant to prepare someone, not just physically. We do believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ حَيٍّ And that means if you drink water, or if you keep your body intact with water too, it refreshes you. It brings cleanliness to you. How do you feel after taking a shower? Don't you feel refreshed? So 
when you are washing yourself five times a day, as the Prophet mentioned in one of the hadith, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if someone, there is a river you know, in front of you. And that's how he said the salawat al-khams. So this salah that is uh, performed with a prior wash and symbol to that, at a time when people in Arabia were fighting for water, yani for the scarce of water and uh, the loss of availability for the water, Islam came and said, no, hygiene and cleanliness is an important thing that Muslims should keep even in times when they are living in deserts or other places. Another thing, you cannot also judge people from your own culture on another cultures. Islam is a practical religion for people around the world from the time the Prophet came وسلم, till now. So you have people who are farmers, people who are construction, people living in cold places and hot places, people who are walking barefoot, people. With all these circumstances, Islam came to produce a simple approach into keeping the minimum of hygiene. If it was through the wudu, or if it was through the sunan al-fitra, that also the Prophet Sallallahu spoke about. Now with this being said, let me say also, there are so many people who are so sensitive against anything Islamic, but yes, there are things also from the other side, people who are not Muslims, but they are proud of their relationship with Muslims. Two days ago, I joined a group walking in downtown, against the gun violence. And there were around like 1,500 people in that marsh. And everyone came, you know, of all different religions. And I took the microphone and I recited ayat from the Quran al kareem And then I s spoke about the importance of safety and security in an Islamic perspective. And you can see how many people lined up just to say thank you. And we appreciate your presence, and this is something we need to come together. So my point between this article and the incident that took a couple days ago, we need to invest with those people who are open-minded to what is diverse, who are with you in areas that are making sense to them, and they believe they are on the same page. And yet we have to be aware and able to respond to these things in which that people, just because you are a Muslim, they would like to stamp you with anything of negativity or uh, try to put anything against you as an individual or as Islamic uh, religion by itself. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.